last year, term two, I decided to venture into new, new ideas, robotics, artificial intelligence, all these new technologies that excited me because I knew something great was on the horizon. But one thing I wanted to keep close to me was my, my passion for design. So I looked into 3D printing. What I liked about 3D printing was that over its years of it becoming more commercialized, it started growing communities. And then within each of any of these communities were all these objects of just absolute beauty and, and intricateness. And it just, it just mesmerized me. It, it, it hooked me in. I just started looking into it. Also, the fact that what was made out of 3D printing could not have been done in other different methods. You can't make such um, objects you see right now with um, previous manufacturing methods. So I knew that this was the right topic to dive into. Another thing that intrigued me was just how, how relatable what is made in 3D printing is to what you see in nature. When you look at nature, you see all these mathematical equations that come together and they fabricate these objects of both function but also absolute form. And this is, this is what hooked me in, just the relationship between you can make these ornaments with um, nature itself. So over the summer, um, I looked into this further in the enterprise program here at Warwick. And uh, my team and I looked, we focused on more of the software side of things within 3D printing. And what we came to realize was that people rely heavily on tools when it comes to designing. So just to put things into an analogy, we use pencils, pens when we want to draw, paintbrushes when we want to paint, and then 3D modeling software when it comes to 3D design. <coughs> but there's a new term on the brink called generative design. And this is actually putting intelligence into 3D modeling software. And what I mean by that is that Imagine the software is able to come up with thousands of solutions without you yourself having done much. Imagine you had a, an idea in your head, you had a model, and you were to somewhat speak to the, to the software, ask, talking, inputting, setting objectives, and it would analyze it and produce all these, all these um, thousands of different um, designs of which you have the freedom to choose from. So this... this, this absolutely intrigued me. This, to think that artificial intelligence can be input into 3D design, th that was the setting point. But there's also more to um, that aspect. There's also what is called computational creativity in the sense that, well, to, to give an example, imagine you were to design something and you jump into this software and it were to ask you what you want to create. And it's almost like a Google search where you could literally write, I want to make a lampshade, I want to make a piece of jewelry, or even uh, ecological hut. It, it would be able to look into its database, look to all its models it has gathered over the internet, and be able to suggest design templates, styles, patterns, that eventually you will be able to choose, be able to personalize your own designs. So we live in this age where processing power, the power of our computers are at a level where software is able to do amazing things. And it's also when you look at um, what, what um, if you look at what's called 3D rendering technology, which is um, I make a model and I render it and this is how it looks like, it is almost as realistic as it is in real life. So I can only imagine software in the future being ever more realistic and ever more intuitive for the everyday user. And when you look at it on a whole, when, when you give the people the, the opportunity to design things on a holistic view, having people um, personalize and customize their own designs would in a sense uh, help, um, reduce the amount of standardized products because there's so much stuff that's made already and we have to go out and buy it, whereas if we were given the opportunity to customize it in the first place, then all this unused stuff would not have to be made in the first place. And 
not only in software that we've seen improvements, we've also seen improvements in, in how things are made. So there are also robotics out there that are able to 3D print bridges, as you can see in this image. So we're very, very close to something very great. I could only imagine in the future, people will be able to, have, to design the stuff, and there'll be a huge variety of things being made. And they get 3D printed out. They could even be assembled together by robots, and then shipped and packaged to your very door by drones. So this is the sort of vision that has driven me over the last few months to enter into this. So just to conclude, I think that this, this level of um, technology, intelligence design, is, is just another way of us being able to communicate our ideas at a, a high level. Being able to somewhat empathize, uh, in a sense, understanding what people would want when it comes to design or what are we trying to solve. I feel that intelligent design is a way of making it more accessible for the everyday user and somewhat escalating that level of creativity to some level that we can only imagine. Thank you.